So, first off, the position of the subject. So, like I said, these support pads are used to ensure, you know, 30 degrees flexion in the knee. Um, this support pad, in this case, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's, it's not symmetric, uh, so the short side usually goes towards the hip and the long one go, goes towards the ankle. What you want to achieve is, you want to get the whole leg to be supported by the support pad. So, um, you don't want to see a position like that. It wouldn't affect the results much, but nevertheless, you try to, to make the subject um, in the position in which the muscles that you're measuring are really, really relaxed. Um, so the second thing that you need to do, you need to position the electrodes over the muscle belly that you will measure. So in this case, uh, you know what you'll do, so you will see a little bit more. we we'll just switch yeah. the legs, okay? Yep. Okay, put it down. So we'll measure the medial head because you will see it probably from the last row, um, you know, where the muscle belly borders are, so you will understand where you should position the electrodes before the measurement. So in this case, we will start with the medial head, so the vastus medialis muscle. I know where it is, but in order for me to, to position the electrodes easier, I usually, usually ask a subject to contract. Probably you can see from there, this is, these are the borders of the muscle belly. You can relax. So if I want to isolate as much as I can, and I want, I would like to put both electrodes within you know, that, uh, that muscle belly. If I go across, if I go too high with one electrode, I will get direct co-contraction from the rectus femoris muscle, which will affect the result that I get. So, maybe not the first part, but especially the second one. But again, criteria should be try to isolate as much as you can. So again, please extend your knee. I will measure in the center of the muscle belly. Relax. So I put one electrode higher and one uh, electrode lower. So one proximal, the other one distal from the measuring point. In this case, um, the space between the electrodes is few centimeters. So it, it all depends on how big the muscle is. Sometimes, uh, since these are not the only electrodes that you have to use, in most cases, this uh, standard size 50 by 50 millimeters is used. And for most of the big muscles, it's good enough. So you need to leave enough room for the, for the sensor to be positioned. Um, but if you have a long muscle, like, I don't know, let's say rectus femoris, you usually leave up to one width of the electrode. So it's five centimeters, then you have five centimeters space. And again, five centimeters is the other electrode. Um, so this is about placement. The orientation of the electrodes will not affect the results, but some, uh, you know, if you read the research papers, they try to use the same positioning. So one electrode, so positive, always proximal, negative, distal, or even vice versa. It depends on what do you choose. Again, it will not affect the results, but if you want to have the same protocol, then you follow the same procedure. Um, next step would be positioning of the sensor. Before I position the sensor, I will just make some comments about how the position, how the sensor should be positioned. So you just bring everything closer. The criteria that you have to follow is, um, so the amplitude of the sensor tip is 32 millimeters. I don't know if you remember the numbers, the displacement, the DM was somewhere between 2 and 15 millimeters. Um, in that case, that means that you shouldn't press more than half the sensor tip in when you're positioning on the muscle. So you need to leave enough room for the sensor tip to measure, uh, to move. So during the measurement, you will clearly see if you pushed it too far in, you will get you know, a flat line on top. That means that the sensor went all the way in and you have no additional movement. On the other hand, you need to, to create some pressure 
on the muscle that you are measuring. So you don't just lean against the muscle, you have to press. So the sensor tip should move a little bit inside the sensor because that means that you have the um, contact with the muscle that you will be measuring. If you don't have this contact, this initial pressure, you will not record the beginning of contraction. So criteria should be press the sensor tip in and leave enough room for the sensor tip to move. So in most cases, push it about halfway in and that should, that should do it. Now, where exactly do you position the sensor? Like I said, each muscle has a certain guidelines, but in this case it's quite straightforward. I will put it in the center of the muscle belly, in this case like in this area, relax. And I will put it perpendicular to the surface of the skin or of, uh, perpendicular to the muscle. Because when the muscle will contract, it will um, generate movement in that direction. So I would like to position the sensor in the direction in which the, the muscle belly will um, deform. In this case, this is quite simple. Some muscles are a little bit different, but again, uh, some guidelines uh, are given every time that uh, a new person is taught how to use the TMG. So, let's do that. Once you position the sensor, then you ask a subject not to move again, because now if you know there is a small movement doesn't uh, affect everything but if you would have a big movement now so the sensor would you know go to a completely different position obviously that would affect the result that you will get so when you position once you position this you are ready to begin with the measurement so um, I just put one random, uh, random uh, subject inside, so I didn't take his, <coughs> his uh, real data. So now the results that will be shown will be, just let me skip back to see it. A subject who is between 22, uh, between 20 and 29, and the spore that I've chose, chose it's all slash none. That means it will be just an average of of all sports. So if I would measure a soccer player, I would say, okay, what's your age? Because the age will affect the reference values that will be shown. Of course, the gender will affect the reference values that will be shown. And the position in which this soccer player is playing will affect the reference values. So you try to make um, <coughs> the right choice when cho choosing uh, the sport in which the subject is involved in. Otherwise, you know, if you put the sprinter data as reference values, he would be, he would seem to be very, very slow, and all the muscles would seem very, very loose. But if uh, you know, if you compare it to the, to the data it should be compared to, the results would probably look quite normal. Um, so, so maybe so just uh, how many, how how many people have you in the database? Um, <coughs> it depends on the sport. So for some sports, for like soccer, we have thousands. For basketball, we have hundreds. For swimming, that would also be something that Louis is interested in. We have maybe 20 or 30 people. So, but uh, again, you know, the software allows you to generate your own reference database within 30 seconds, as soon as you have enough subjects to to measure. Um, so. When you choose which muscle to measure here, you can choose it just by clicking on these dots here. Uh, here beneath you have you know, some reminder of where the electrodes should be and where the sensor should be. In this case we have right vastus medialis muscle and when I choose this I'm ready to do the measurement. So just before I click on the measure um, I will explain what you will see. You will get, obviously, you will get a curve. The curve will be in orange. That means that th th that is a current measurement. So this is the measurement I just did. When I will do more measurements than one, all the previous ones will be shown in blue color. So you will see how the, the signal is gradually getting higher and higher. If I move to the other side, I would have the green curve also 
for a comparison between left and right. If I did the measurement on this person, on this, this muscle somewhere in the past, I can also see um, the black curve that will show me I will also get the black curve that will show me the measurements from either the you know the previous one up to six previous measurements. So I can during the measurement I can compare left and right, I can compare today's measurement to last month's measurement if I want to. Of course not the numbers. If you want to see the numbers then you generate the trend report. It's just for the you know the first impression, you know, if there is any difference or not.